please subscribe and don't forget to press the bell icon to get notified whenever we upload a new video. Market starting slightly in the red, just slightly, but this will count as flat, 10,940. We are expecting the nifty earnings growth to be about 20% for this year. And, uh, you know, this should continue into next year as well. You know, the call is what you just said, consolidating its gains. So we don't want to enter and find the consolidation will chop us around. Now, the good thing with this sort of a day is that, you know, it gets short positions into the system. The headline index is under pressure. The market breadth is also quite weak. So there's definitely a wave of profit taking that you're seeing in the mid cap end of trade. We've had a fair amount of selling on a lot of the PSU banks, on a lot of metal stocks, of course, beyond the Nifty 50 as well. So something like a sale, 5% down. Uh, we've seen weakness on JSPL, about 3.5-4% down on that one. Fears of a trade war between US and China uh, sends jitters across global markets. Uh, Nifty and Sensex end flat. The TCS stock spikes more than 5% after reporting a solid first quarter. The IT uh, major's constant currency revenue growth was the highest in the last 15 quarters. Metal stocks tumble in trade after US threatens additional tariffs and uh, uh, on steel and aluminum imports. Strong dollar weakened sentiment further. Hindalco Sale and Coal India were the top losers. Adani and IDB, a bank rally in trade. Adani Enterprises surges over 8% after emerging as the top bidder for city, ga city gas uh, distribution licenses. IDB, a bank rises nearly 7% after reports that the uh, LIC investment in the bank could trigger an open offer. And founder of Sriram Group, R. Tyagarajan, confirmed the CNBC TV18 news break. He says the group is considering the possibility of merging the listed NBFCs into Sriram Capital as a single listed entity also clarifies that nothing has been finalized uh, but a lot has been discussed those were the top five headlines from dalal street today hello and welcome to markets today talk back this is the show where we tell you all about six hours of the day's trading action in just five headlines i'm lata venkatesh with me, my colleague Prashant Nair. Hi, Prashant. Another hi. Uh, so, absolutely flat, closed by 3.30. Uh, and uh, this comes after two days of very strong gains. Over the next 30 minutes, as Lata pointed out, we will discuss what really drove things, the top five stories, the five headlines, which define the day. Our guests will answer your stocks, the stock questions that you send our way. So, Mitesh Thakkar uh, will uh, look up the charts, tell us what to do. Gorang Shah on the fundamentals. Gentlemen, thanks very much, both of you, for being with us here on the show. Before we start the Q&A session uh, and uh, we start answering the questions that you send us, let's first wrap up the day's events and uh, it again centered and circled back to trade wars between US and China and all that kind of talk. Absolutely. That was the talk uh, to which we woke up and Asia was extremely somber because of a threat of fresh $200 billion uh, uh, of uh, goods uh, under potential uh, tariff attack from the United States. Uh, but, uh, you know, we had a lot of bullish cues overnight. We had excellent TCS numbers. And already the bulls were in control. In the futures market, you could very clearly see FII long positions to the extent of 32,000 crores over just two days. But uh, today, uh, the Nifty had to take a bit of a breather, probably because of the global cues and probably because, there, you know, a consolidation after two, three days of climbing is always helpful. So the climb to 11,000, the most convincing climb we have seen since January to 11,000, got stalled, uh, slowed, but not stopped, I would think. Uh, uh, of course, today, if you remove TCS, then probably the Nifty would have been down 30 points, but that's not the way to look at it. TCS results indicate that there is a lot more steam left in the IT companies, and this result season could spring surprises in other sectors as well. And therefore, I would think that uh, the climb to 11,000 is slowed, consolidated, only to climb further. But uh, stock-wise... Uh, so, I mean, under pressure, metals were under pressure. I mean, by far, the sector most under pressure, and it kind of sort of ties in with what's happening on trade, etc. Underlying commodities, copper, etc., fell on the Shanghai exchange, fell on the LME. It showed up here in prices as well. The PSU Bank Index was weak quite a bit. The Nifty P Auto Index was down about 1% as well. Big gains. I mean, uh, so let's just quickly wrap that out. TCS, by far, and out and out. Infosys and HCL also followed 
I guess, in sympathy. Numbers for those two are still due. Bajaj Auto, HUL and Reliance were the other three large caps which did quite well. Large cap stocks which lost. Tata Motors had gained about 20 rupees in the last two days along with the market which had bounced. It lost about nearly 3% today. Coal India was down 5. Bank of Baroda was lower. And as I said, commodities, Tata Steel, Hindalco, Coal India, some of the large metal stocks, mining stocks which were lower. Adani, I mean, it's one of the headlines. So power, enterprises, transmission. I mean, uh, decent gains. Transmi Adani transmission came off the highs but still ended up about 2%, 2.5% higher. Broader market gains, IDBI continues the march up. It's reacting to the CNBC TV18 story. I mean, actually, almost all of the near 18% odd gains we've seen over the last two days has happened after the after so we reported that there's uh, an open offer which uh, may may need to have uh, to be made. Godrich Consumer was up five and a half. Tata LXI. Uh, you had I India Bulls Real Estate. Dilip Bilcon continues the five percent. Uh, circuit daily move on the way up as well, just like it did on the way down. Bombay dying was up about four and a quarter percent. In terms of broader losses, United uh, uh, Phosphorus, U UPL, uh, Bank of India, Steel Authority of India, Motherson, and a whole list of uh, metal names once again, which looked quite weak. Rather. Okay. Well, that's a lot, really. Yeah, metals quite clearly uh, had or contained the global weakness, uh, uh, you know, much more or reflected the global weakness much more than any other sector. Let's find out uh, what the charts are telling us first. Uh, Mitesh, uh, is it still a fundamentally bullish story? Uh, would you, ra if you had to have positions, would they rather be long ones? What's tomorrow's position? Uh, I would believe so, Lata. The only thing is that you're asking a technical analyst about a fundamentally bullish story. But that apart, I think the, the market, you know, given the fact that we've had very two strong up moves, I think might spend about two, three days sideways. But my belief is that, one, if we don't break 10,890 on the downside again, I think the trend remains positive. And the upside targets, too, could be in the range of about 11,070 to about 11,150. All right, Mitesh, uh, yes, you accuse me of asking you a fundamental question. I'll ask an expert who looks at fundamentals. Uh, joining us now from London is Nick Parsons, the head of research and strategy of uh, Thomas Lloyd. Nick, thank you very much indeed for joining us. Uh, uh, this fresh uh, Trump salvo that's uh, uh, kind of quietened uh, the risk appetite across Asia and Europe for the day. Is this again for the day? Is this again an opportunity only to buy? Well, first of all, thank you for your very flattering introduction. I do appreciate it. It's always a pleasure to be on your show. Uh, let, let's start with a bit of context. That The Dow Jones is only exactly where it was on the 1st of January this year. Yes. Um, so for all these fears of a huge sell-off, the net change has been zero in mm. either direction. So I think that's important, just, just a reminder of, of where we are. Mm. We're at or very close to the 200-day moving average, so no great, uh, no great clues from that one. Um, but I think what we're going to have to look at here is the reaction from China, mm. because China really holds the key, not just in terms of its policy response on tariffs, but what it's going to do on the exchange rate mm. and what that then means for the whole of uh, Asia Asia and the whole of the EM complex, because that really holds the key from here. It's whether or not the Chinese authorities decide to continue with the policy which seemed to be apparent in June of allowing the renminbi to weaken, or whether they continue with the July to date policy of just trying to offer it a little bit of support. That really is going to hold the key for markets from here. <coughs> Nick, uh you know, so there, there isn't $200 billion worth of imports from the U.S. that China mm -hmm. has, right? So it can't Correct. be tit for tat. It has to be something else. Uh, what is that something well, else? Yeah, what China can do under the, under the rules the of WTO, you're absolutely right um, that China exports $500 million to the U.S., but the U.S. only exports $200, million to China, so $200 billion to mm. China. So what it can do is under WTO rules, China can increase tariffs of more than 10%, mm. or it is allowed to uh, move over into the service sector where the U.S. still runs a surplus on services with China. Okay. So it is possible um, that this is going to be extended mm. in either in terms of quantity of tariffs mm. or in scope, which moves over to services. So there is plenty that still can be done by the Chinese here. But if you were a betting man, uh, what would you do at this point in time? Are you buying the dip? I mean, for, why the Dow? Even the Nifty is actually year-to-date uh, 
up perhaps 3% mm -hmm. uh, for all the outflows from emerging markets. Year to date, uh, it's not been a bad uh, deal for the Nifty. So uh, would you buy the Nifty? Uh, would you buy EMs? Where would be India in the pecking order for you? Well, I, th I think India is, is one of relative outperformance. Uh, and I think that story is still likely to continue. Uh, I think we have to look at the fact that if this slows down exports from China, mm. then one possible response by companies globally will be to outsource some of that manufacturing which they have currently got within China to India and elsewhere in Southeast Asia. So actually, India potentially could be at the margin a beneficiary here. Mm -hmm. So that's one possibility, one bullish thing to bear in mind. And I think the buy the dip mentality that you referred to has not entirely been extinguished. Uh, and certainly investors will probably have at least one more go at repeating that trick, mm. uh, which has served them so well over the last six to nine months. So uh, mm. I still think we're in a case where uh, the dip is for buying okay. uh, rather than actually calling a market top here. Okay, yeah, actually. And just one more argument in favor of the mm. global bulls. Uh, mm. the, the results season have so far has been very good in the United States as well. Uh, we were given to understand yesterday that 86 percent of the countries that uh, of the companies that have announced results so far have beaten estimates, have done better than estimates. Uh, I mean, so global growth is intact. Therefore, uh, you know, uh, risk markets can take these trade noises in their stride. Would you say? I think taking them in the stride might be a bit of an exaggeration, but I don't think it's. I don't think this is the point at which one needs to panic. Mm -hmm. uh, this is the point at which one needs to be selective, uh, and in applying that selective approach, uh, it's my belief that India is one of the countries which, on a relative basis, mm -hmm. is going to continue to outperform from here. I firmly believe that. All right, Nick Parsons, thank you very much for putting that in context for the Indian investor. Uh, the bulls have just uh, uh, returned after. After, uh, being kind of outnumbered uh, in the previous two weeks so they would love to hear this with that the second headline well uh, TCS uh, is uh, the headline of the day actually and this is the second headline the stock rallied in trade today after posting a robust set uh, of results for the first quarter the stock gained more than 5%. The company's constant currency growth came in at 4.1%, which is the highest in the last 15 quarters. CNBC TV18's Reema Tendulkar, who caught up with the TCS management uh, to get a deeper insight in the business and what the future looks like uh, earlier this morning, that conversation happened. Listen in to some important excerpts. We've been focused on trying to get back to the double-digit uh, trajectory. Uh, still a uh, tad short of that. But uh, we have the momentum and most importantly, the broad-based growth coming across all segments, uh, especially the turnaround that we're seeing in both BFSI as well as North America, is giving us a lot of confidence that we should be able to get there. BFSI has grown by about 3.7%, excluding the platforms things. And if you include the platforms and whole all BFSI has uh, turned around and uh, we are growing at about 5.6%. And um, the deal pipeline is good, and the bookings that we have made during this quarter is very nice, and it is very broad-based, and specifically, more than about a billion-plus uh, of deal booking has happened in the BFSI segment. Okay, uh, we've got a question on TCS now. Manash Das has written to us from Kolkata, uh, and uh, he's, a, he's been holding the TCS stock. I mean, a 1,000 shares of TCS. Wow. Uh, at uh, I mean the cost is 2486 rupees a share he's a long term investor and wants to know if he should hold or sell uh, let's get a fundamental and a technical view uh, on this one uh, mitesh where this is i mean after a day like today uh, what does it what does it tell us about the future for the stock Yeah, no, I believe yeah. that the holding price should be uh, yeah the holding price should be about twelve forty three because of the bonus uh, that happened uh, in the stock price. So I would suggest a hold on. I think there is no worry as such. Uh, we have been looking at targets close to about twenty one hundred twenty one fifty. I think once we reach those levels, a fresh call can be taken. But the stock is not showing any signs of weakness on the medium to longer term chart. So maybe higher levels could be tested also there as well. I w I would clearly suggest a hold. Oh yes, Mr. Manish Das is sitting actually on fifty percent profits. Uh, Gaurang, your advice. Well, good evening to you, Lata, and to all. Uh, you know, about a year and a half, two back, if you would have asked anybody to buy Indian IT companies, they would have said, stayed away. Mm -hmm. uh, H-1B visa issues, uh, policy changes by the U.S. in terms of deployment of workforce, etc., etc. 
as a brokerage house we remain positive then we remain positive now and these performance what we are witnessing for tcs what they delivered yesterday and given the fact that there are two buybacks that the company is doing this only reinforces our confidence in terms of long term investment buy even at current level if somebody wants to buy uh, post bonus like mitesh mentioned his prices are at 1250 or thereabouts stock is trading close to about 2000 close to about 1980 to be more precise i think there is lot more to be seen in terms of earnings turn around so stay invested fair enough and with that uh, we will go to the third headline uh, for the day metal stocks took a pounding uh, all thanks to the us uh, president donald trump's threat Uh, to po- impose additional tariffs on chinese goods including some steel and aluminum products as well stronger dollar also added to global metal woes uh, and back home the nifty metals index was down more than 3% dragged down by hindalco's uh, well sale is not a, a nifty stock but yes sale also dragged vedanta dragged coal india dragged manisha gupta is joining us to give us the backdrop on metals sir go ahead manisha Well thank you yes it has been a very weak day for metals we saw multi year lows for many of them especially copper and zinc where we saw 12 month and 13 month lows respectively for both the metals mid the major reason of course has been uh, you know the US administration yet again saying that they are going to slap 10% more tariff on nearly 200 billion dollars worth of chinese imports that is something that the markets were not anticipating so soon it was only last week that we saw 34 billion dollars worth of goods being uh, imposed tariffs on from us and then china responded to that that is something that the markets more or less had factored in but this came in as a surprise and the list has a lot of consumer goods including some metals as well and that didn't augur so well so we did see 3 to 4% decline on elmi and nearly 4 to 6% of a cut in many of these metals on shanghai as well adding to that there also is the strength in us dollar you have seen the supplies in warehouses and the mine supplies come online for many of these metals and then of course apart from that the economic data in the recent few weeks from china and european union hasn't been so positive so all of that clearly has been adding up and even as we have seen the metal prices decline 15 to 20% in last couple of months with what's happening in the global trade war scenario the feeling is that with the kind of fundamentals we are working with for the downward risk in these metals is still not ruled out so thank you very much uh, for that and i mean if uh, this uh, trade thing continues to simmer uh, be sure commodities and metals will be an area which will continue to see uh, pressure uh, trepidation going forward we take a very quick break the first of the show uh, but before we do that let's get some uh, get let's get some uh, get in some market opinion beg your pardon pradeep gupta head of equities at deutsche bank india on the road ahead for the market the sectors he's betting on listen in our preference at the start of this year since the start of the year has been to prefer it services versus pharmaceuticals amongst the you know exporters and that call has played out even from here i think that call stays uh, however our preference would be for companies which have a uh, large exposure to the us relatively larger exposure to the us and secondly to bfsi these are the two segments where we see uh, relatively better growth prospects and where you could see potential earning surprises coming through so within the sector also you got to be a bit more uh, stock specific specific but broadly speaking yes uh, we we you know we would focus on the bfsi and the us uh, uh, exposed companies welcome back you're still with us here on market today talk back flat close for markets after two days of very strong gains we've got through three of the five uh, stories that uh, defined the day today here's the fourth one adani and idbi bank were the two star performers of the day adani enterprises today surged to almost more than 8% gains after the group emerged as the top bidder for city gas retailing licenses <coughs> they are in 52 cities idbi bank also battled for bulls the stock rallied to almost uh, rallied by almost 7% after reports that uh, <coughs> lic may actually need to make an open offer uh, to consummate the deal the idbi bank deal uh, i mean lada in terms of shareholders what the, what would this mean i mean it's rallied from sub 50 to 57 now yeah uh, and 47 uh, i think at the low yeah. Uh, well you know the arithmetic is like this and everyone knows it by now <coughs> the government stake at the moment is 81% and lic is 11% so together they hold 92% uh, if uh, another 170 crore new shares are issued to lic which in all probability will be done lic becomes uh, the 51% holder but the government stake doesn't uh, decline in in terms of numbers so you're doing open offer ultimately only for probably 7% of uh, the minority shareholders or even less when the fresh shares are allowed the minor- 
uh, are offered, the percentage of the minority uh, shareholders will decrease even further, you know, probably to 6%. Uh, now, an open offer is usually 25%. Uh, can you have a situation where minority share, shareholders decrease even more? Of course, at that time, the LIC will count the government as a non-promoter because LIC will be promoter. But even then, if the government is not going to tender in, what kind of an open offer is this uh, if the total amount of uh, free float decreases even further? So I don't know what uh, the SEBI chairman will do. Uh, the math is extremely skewed. If they do a, 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 announce an open offer, everyone who tenders... Uh, will find their shares accepted. But then what is the open float of the share? I don't know what the uh, LIC is going to do. <coughs> Everything is hearsay. And we don't know what the SEBI chairman will do because the SEBI chairman today said he has not even been approached mm. uh, by LIC. But the market is banking only on the math. If there is an open offer, then the highest price in the last six months was 85. The lowest price was 47. So the average should come, you know, uh, closer to 60 rupees or maybe even 65. So, you know, that's what people are betting on, but uh, one doesn't know the exact cutoff date. What will be the six months? Will there be an open offer? And uh, uh, therefore, what will be the All of this, by the way, has to get cabinet approval. It still has to get cabinet approval. And the proposal which is put before the cabinet could be a little different than what we are discussing at this point. It so, could well be. Uh, I mean, we are, uh, yeah, the entire open offer thing is still yeah, here. Yeah. Okay. All right. We've got a question. Madan Kumar uh, is writing in uh, from... Uh, Bangalore and he has a question on IDBI Bank. He's been holding the 250 shares of the company. His cost is a hundred rupees a share uh, and uh, he's been holding the stock for the last three years. Wants to know if he should hold or sell. Gorang? I think it's one of the most difficult questions, Prashant, because as uh, Lata was just, you know, elaborating on the entire mathematics and uh, there are a lot of approvals that you will need to take. Uh, more importantly is acquisition price. So even if the open offer has to come at the higher end, it's a 65, he's still minus 35. Mm. And if I look at the earnings of IDBI Bank, I think it is a great disappointment. Let me give a disclosure, Prashant, we don't have a coverage on IDBI Bank. Mm. Uh, so I can't comment on buy, sell and hold. Okay. But if wisdom is on my side, I would not possibly venture in any way. Okay. Well, point taken. Uh, so even if it is at the upper end, uh, this gentleman is not making money and fundamentally you don't uh, think much of that stock. Okay, the fifth and uh, the last headline from the uh, street today. Founder of Sri Ram Group, Arthyag Rajan, confirmed a CNBC TV18 news break that the group is considering a possibility of merging the two listed NBFCs into Sri Ram Capital, the unlisted uh, uh, parent company, and therefore list one single entity. However, he clarified that nothing is certain or finalized yet. Uh, listening to Arthyag Rajan. Right now, we are not very near to any merger decision, but it is being examined. We will take into account the pros and cons, the advantages, the disadvantages, the workability, and then take a decision in due, due course. But nothing is immediately being planned. We have to be concerned about the motivation level of these people if we make a change. We take that into account. Then shareholders, our customers, all these factors, in what way it will impact these three segments is something which we take into account. In that, our concern for the shareholders of the companies is paramount. Okay, that should be reassuring. We've got a question. Thiru V has written to us from Bangalore and he has a question on Sriram Transport Finance. He's been holding 500 shares of the company. Cost is 9.85 a piece. He's, he's a medium-term investor. Wants to know whether you should hold or sell. Uh, Mitesh, uh, what would you tell him? Yeah, I think, you know, in the short term, the damage appears to be done for the stock. But my sense is that I think the medium term charts have kind of taken a breather with this decline. Okay. So I think the stock might just consolidate between about 1300 on the upside mm. to roughly about 1050 on the downside. So in that sense, I think, you know, if he if he has a shorter term horizon, let's say a few months, around 1300 should be a good exit point for him. And he can re-enter at about 1050 or so. All right, gentlemen, completely out of time. Thank you very much for taking the questions and giving your answers. And all of you out there, thank you very much for watching. Markets Today Talk Back.